Okay, hello everybody. Um, welcome to my talk, uh, Location Analytics, Real-Time Geofencing using uh, Kafka. My name is uh, Gito Schmutz. I'm working for uh, Trivadis. We are an IT service company or service provider company uh, operating in Switzerland, Germany and Austria. So I'm, I'm from Switzerland, um, as you might hear from my English already. Um, so what is my talk about today? I will start... Um, with an introduction and motivation into geofencing, what is it all about, a little bit about Kafka. So I'm an, more an expert in the Kafka area and less an expert in geofencing. If I say it's an introductory uh, talk, I really mean introductory into geofencing, a bit less into Kafka. Um, you will see I will use uh, quite a lot in the KSQL area. So I have a lot of, I wouldn't say code, I have a lot of KSQL statements in my presentation in my slides uh, where I will show you step by step what I have tried, what you might go in the, where you might go into, into the wrong direction and which, which parts actually work. I will talk about an implementation in uh, KSQL. I will also talk about an implementation using Tile38. Uh, I will come back to that. And last but not least, uh, uh, visualization using Arcadia data. So that's the agenda for today. So, um, yeah, Guido, as I mentioned, I work for Trialis more than 22 years. I have experience in the area of Java. Um, in the last couple of years, I mostly uh, worked in the area of big data and fast data. A lot of work with Kafka, a lot of presentation with Kafka. I'm an architect um, and have more than 30 years of software development experience. I'm active on social media. I'm not publishing a lot of my own content. What I do is I have a weekly edition of what's new in stream processing. So this, this is a lot of links, uh, links to presentation, links of blog articles, which just uh, came out the previous week. I'm doing that for more than th uh, three years. So I'm around 160 editions uh, so far. So I'm doing it every Monday. So tonight or maybe tomorrow should be the next uh, edition. There's some book I've written, but that's not really uh, interesting for that talk. So let's start uh, with the talk. Uh, it's a brand new talk. Uh, I haven't done that uh, before. I just uh, worked a lot last week on it, uh, including the weekend. So I'm not pretty sure how it works out uh, in terms of time, so we'll see. Um, I just have to speak a bit faster, but it's Monday morning still for me in a way, so that's maybe hard. So let's see. So what is geofencing? Geofencing is you have a map, you have areas on the map, you have objects which move around, and you're interested in is an object actually uh, entering a fence? This is the fence. Is it near the fence? Is it entering the fence? Is it inside the fence? Or is it outside the fence? So you have a lot of statuses which are, it's outside, then it's entering it, it's inside, it's exiting it, and then it's outside again. So this is geofencing, nothing more, nothing less. So you need a capability to have areas. This is usually static, although we'll see there can also be moving areas. But at the moment here, at the beginning, I'll just cover static areas, or my whole talk co covers static areas, and we have objects moving around. It could be vehicles, it could be passengers, it, uh, it could be uh, persons, um, it could be um, uh, goods you deliver, and so on. And you're basically interested in these events, inside entering, exit event. Outside is maybe a bit less important. What can you do with it? You can do a lot of things. So from uh, delivery space, so you want to send out goods and you want to optimize that. Maybe you have so doing some transportation, taxing, Uber kind of things, transportation management, logistics. You want to track uh, valuable goods. You want to track when they leave uh, your your, uh, the, your store uh, and you want to make sure that they actually should leave and not somebody stealing your valuable goods and so on. So here a set of use cases. I don't want to go into all of them. What is geoprocessing? So I'm still pretty new into that, I would say, um, but I was always interested in uh, geofencing, especially uh, together with stream analytics, because if you want to do a geofencing use case, then probably you're interested in, 
in real-time or near-real-time responses if something happens on a geofence. It's not a batch use case where you find out the next day that something happened, that's too late. So, um, there is well-known text, uh, we will see that, that's why I have it here and here in the well-known text format. So, there's a, a format of how you can describe uh, objects in a geospace and you have points. Points form a line string, so a root could be uh, a, a line string consisting of multiple points. Uh, and then you have polygons. Uh, a polygon is an area with points. I guess you know what a polygon is. And this is the description of uh, that polygon. A polygon could also be empty in the middle. I, in my talk, I only have filled polygon, but it, it would work with the other one as well. And a polygon is basically what you use to, to specify your geofence. It could also be a circle. Often it's even easier if it's a circle, but of course more interesting are polygons because not everything is a, is a circle. You don't want to build your warehouses in circles just to do geofencing. You want to do the geofence according to your warehouse or according to your space. If you're in the Java area, and that's important because if I show you KSQL, then I will show you UDFs, user-defined functions, and there you need Java. So I need some help uh, in a Java space, and GeoTools is a free GIS uh, toolkit which you can use to do uh, geo processing in Java. Then Kafka quickly. Uh, it's not an introduction call, talking to Kafka. Um, so we have the Kafka broker. It's basically a message broker, highly scalable message broker sitting in the middle here. And Kafka is more. Kafka is actually a streaming platform, so Kafka can also do stream processing. That's where we, are, where we have KSQL. So KSQL I will, I will use to do the stream processing. And KSQL is always consuming from Kafka and producing back into Kafka. And KSQL sits on on top of Kafka Streams. We will see that uh, later as well. And um, Kafka Streams, you, you use Java to actually develop with it. And with KSQL, you have a SQL-like language which you can use to do stream processing. So it's a quite, or it's a rather quick and easy approach to do stream processing. And then we have the green parts. The green parts are actually Kafka Connect. So this is the interface to the outside world. Not everything is in Kafka, of course, if we talk about position uh, uh, messages, position messages from vehicles, then you can either send them directly to Kafka or maybe they reside in an MQTT broker and you want to bridge from MQTT to Kafka, then you could use a source connector to do that. We will see later a sync connector uh, uh, in action to actually uh, integrate the tile 38 uh, in the second part of the talk. The use case I will present, sorry, I need some water, it's too hot here. The use case I will uh, present is quite simple. We have vehicles or objects, they just uh, publish their position, and we have geofences. So the geofences are more static. Um, of course, you could also think about a more dynamic approach where the weather service is actually providing you geofences about uh, weather conditions where where it's dangerous, maybe, and you want to add them dynamically to GFNs, so the solution should cover that as well. And then you basically want to join your position, each position, to all the geofences. That's basically what you want to do. And then you want to check, is this, is this object inside, outside, uh, and so on. And then you want to publish it as an event and maybe show it as a, on a dashboard. So what I will do now is, by first using KSQL, I will show you step by step how you can implement that. And I will also show you some steps which don't work because I, in, in some areas I really went that path and then I thought about why have I thought about that path and I think it's important or interesting to document it. And in some areas I'm just doing it so it's, uh, it, it builds step by step. The, the whole solution is built step by step. Okay, KSQL. As I already mentioned, KSQL uh, is, a, is, is, is the capability of doing stream processing in Kafka. So you always read from a topic and you produce it back to a topic. It sits on top of Kafka Streams, the Java library, and it just sim simplifies your work because you, if you already know SQL, uh, it's a very sim similar dialect. Uh, it's, it's, it's using SQL or the SQL dialect, uh, and it's just called, called KSQL. And you have two important concepts in KSQL. 
One is streams or stream, and the other one is table. Stream is your event stream. That's your unbounded uh, data, so the facts are immutable. When you get a fact, it's an event-based or it's, a, it's an event kind, and it can not change. So a position uh, is an event. Uh, a position at a certain amount of time or a certain second, that's your event, and maybe a second later you get a new position, so this, this is a new event. So this is a stream. A table is a collected state of a stream. Uh, the source of a table is still a, is still, is still a Kafka topic, so an event stream, but now we only keep the last value by key. If you know Kafka, you know that a message is always consisting of a key and a value. And if you want to work with tables, you have to provide a key. You can, if you create the table, you can map a value to the key. You will just see that in a minute, or in a, almost in a second. Uh, and that's very important. So you only keep the last value, the last state of a given object, for example. So this is what I will use for the uh, geofences, because a geofence has an ID, and I'm only interested in the latest kind of value for that geofence. And often, of course, these geofences will not change. They'll, they are very fixed, very static. So to begin, what I need is I need a stream and I need a table, or I'll define a stream and a table. The vehicle positions, so the geo positions, the, the positions of the vehicles, these are a stream. So I'm doing create stream, uh, I specify the name of the stream and then the data types and on which topic, on which Kafka topic that stream should sit. And in that case, this is not really the 100% the correct uh, uh, implementation, but it works as well. Uh, so this is the delimited version. Uh, in my real implementation, I'm using Avro here, so I copied the wrong uh, statement over. But you can see, if I using delimited, and delimited is basically comma separated, the CSV uh, format in your message, then you have to specify the values because it's just doing the mapping. So by using that create stream, you basically bring structure to Kafka because Kafka is just bytes when you transport it over message broker and using the create stream uh, statement, you ba basically specify what is the structure in that topic. And then we have the geofence table, and the geofence table sits on the topic geofence. So this is the geofence topic which I'm using. Here I'm using JSON, and I can specify which fields of the JSON message I want to provide as a table. And what's important here is now the key. It's keyed by ID, so the ID determines which one uh, uh, determines kind of the grouping, and just the latest value is kept. So now how can I determine inside or outside of a geofence? So I have now the geofence in the table, I have positions, and I want to determine is it inside or outside. There are, some, or there, there are uh, functions in, in KSQL, there are uh, functions for geoprocessing, but there's only one, it's called geodistance, so you can basically define or, 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 or measure the distance between two points. But there's no uh, contains uh, method, but what you have, you can basically extend the functions of KSQL by using user-defined function, as you can do in all more or less SQL kind languages that you have a capability to extend it with your own functions. At the moment, this is just Java, so you have to basically implement a, a, a function in Java, and then you can register it as an, as an uh, UDF. You can also define user-defined aggregate functions, but here for the contains is a point inside an, uh, a geometry or a polygon that's uh, good enough to use a user-defined function. So I have two functions here. One is a geofence using latitude, longitude, so this is my point, and a geometry just using this uh, uh, WKT format I've shown before. So I'm just passing a string, what you can see here as a polygon, I'm just passing a string. Of course, it's much longer if it's a large polygon, uh, so it will go on. And then I'm getting back an outside or inside, depending on the latitude or longitude. I also have a bulk version where I can pass latitude, longitude, and a list of polygons. You'll see that later why that isn't easy or why that is necessary. 
it's because it's Java, it's quite simple to implement it. All you know, need to know is is, is the GeoTools uh, library, so I'm using the GeoTools here, and you have to know how that works. Um, so I'm using some code here to actually uh, transform the WKT into a polygon, and then I have the, where is it, the within function. So I can test if a point is within a polygon, and the point, of course, I have to create as well, based on the coordinates I get into here. Uh, you cannot pass into a UDF objects, you can only pass scalar, uh, as well as lists, but you cannot pass your own objects. That's why I can't pass a point into uh, the UDF, UDF on the method level. So it's quite simple, a few lines of code, and by that you can easily extend the capability of KSQL, uh, yeah, as you can do in other SQL languages as well. So for that, of course, you have to be a Java programmer, but if as soon that is that UDF is registered, and all you have to do is just package it, package it and deploy it to the right place, to the right folder, restart the KSQL server, and it will pick it up automatically, and it's available. So now let's use it. Before I can use it, of course, I need to bring the values together. I need the polygons, and I need the, the points, as you have seen. Otherwise, I cannot call the UDF. So my first approach was probably a bit naive, but I'm a, I have a huge background with RDBMS, relational databases, and this is an, I think this is a, maybe a, a, a problem you could get into if you have that. You immediately think about uh, SQL, it's KSQL, it's SQL-like, so why not doing a cross-join, because that's what you really want. You have a stream, or I mean you have one position, and all you want to do is check it against all the polygons you have. So the cross-join would be what you do in in, um, in normal SQL, but that's not possible. You don't have cross-join in KSQL. The next step was, I thought about why not doing an, an inner join, uh, and for doing an inner join, I just specify or I just provide some kind of artificial grouping. I just say every, every uh, latitude, longitude, or every position belongs to group one, and I'm also... Um, I'm also uh, extending all the polygons with that group one. So I'm just saying all the polygons are in one group, and all the, the vehicles are in one group, and then I thought I can, I can join it using an inner uh, join. But that also doesn't work. I mean, that doesn't work in... in it, the problem is not in the join. The Pro problem already starts here. If I want to extend uh, uh, a stream before I insert it into a table, then... Uh, that will that, that fails as well, but it's actually good that it fails because it will would also not work later on because of what I already said a key or, or a table is already key is always keyed and only one value will survive. So let's say uh, let's now see if I have like all the polygons in group one and I would use then group one as the key only one polygon would survive, the latest one, the last one. So this is not uh, a good approach as well. So you cannot do um, insert into table, so that's, that's the, 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 the problem pr before actually uh, the join, but even if I would be able to do it uh, in the join, it will also not work, because I would only have one polygon. I actually tried to do all that stuff um, before, in the database, I had a database first, and I tried to do some joins in the database. I thought I'm clever, and I'm just providing it exactly as it is here, already from the database, and I don't, and I don't need that enrichment group, and I have the table here, but I failed because, yeah, only one value will survive. I only had one polygon at the end um, left. So that's not a good idea either. And what you can also not do is you cannot do one to n joins. So one stream cannot be joined to multiple um, polygons. That's not uh, possible. So the next approach, and that's now where it starts uh, to work, or, or that, that one actually works, is still with the grouping. So the grouping is, is, is still done, but I still have a stream here. And then I do an aggregation, and the aggregation is important uh, that I can actually create the table after that. Um, and what I'm doing, I still have all the polygons in group one. I still have all the, the positions coming from the stream in group one. But now I'm doing 
before I'm doing a join, I'm doing an aggregation by group. So that is wrong, it's not aggregate by vehicle. First I had the vehicle, but now I'm doing it by group. So this is aggregation by group. And what I get out of it is one row with group one, this is also the key, and a list of polygons. So a, a rather long list of all the polygons of all my geofences I had, I've defined are grouped together into one list. And now, because I only have one record left or one event left or one item left in that table, I can join it with the stream. And that's why I'm needing the geofence bulk, because now I have a list of polygons. I have one position, I join it together, and then I call the UDF with the, poly with the position and all the polygons. And the UDF is just looping through the, the list and checks each single polygon. Is it inside or outside? I will come back to that. That is actually the kind of the, uh, the definition or the rating of the solution. But maybe first some code here as well, just to give you an idea how it actually works. I already explained it on kind of text form. Um, so this one here is the group by group ID. So this is the, the upper part where I do a collect set. And the collect set is actually doing the work of just adding all the polygons together. And because after, uh, if I only have one set, I still want to know the ID of the, the polygon. That's why I'm concatting it together using the double point, uh, the colon, as a separator. The enrichment of the stream it's quite simple, uh, of the vehicle position stream. It's just and create another stream as select from the vehicle position. So vehicle position is my initial stream, and I'm just enriching it and creating a new stream, and what I'm doing is just yeah, adding that group one. And now with that, I have the, the grouped by as a table. So this is a create table as select grouped by, and that works. The insert into table doesn't work, as I mentioned before, but the create table I select works from a stream. And the create stream um, statements, these two together, these two objects together, I can now join. And the good part of KSQL, because it's SQL dialect, if you know SQL, it's, it's very easy to join, because it doesn't really change a lot from relational. So, except of, yeah, of course, of the semantics, what you can do and what you can't do, but this, this, the, the, this, the syntax is the same, you can't really see if this is a database or if it's a KSQL. So what I'm doing, I'm joining vehicle position, left join to, the, to this aggregation by group, uh, as shown you before, and I'm calling the geofence bulk, providing latitude, longitude, and that list of geometries. So now what I'm getting back is, I'm getting back for each geometry. So in that case, I only have two, I get an out, outside or inside a status for each uh, geometry or for each polygon I'm passing. So this is my first approach uh, for doing geofencing. The problem here, as you might already think uh, about, this is quite uh, a challenge if you have a lot of geofences, because it will just grow to the right uh, as many as there are geofences. You also get a list back of, of status information. You have to treat that as well. You have to uh, yeah, un, un, uh, unnest it, um, but that could be the, the client doing it. But the problem is more, uh, uh, it's just a lot. And because you only have one, one entry in the table, uh, geofence aggregated by group, it's also not very scalable. That's why, if I go back, Scalable is very low. Latency, medium, because I'm doing a bulk operation, so I'm slow, I, I slow down uh, a little bit the, the whole process. Um, code smell is just meaning how good is the, the, the implementation. You could also say solution smell or architecture smell, but code smell is, is what, we are know, uh, what, we, what we know. So how can we do it better? Or can we do it better? We can do it better by introducing geo hashes. I'm not sure if you all know about geohashing. Geohashing is basically a way um, to, geo, to geocode an, an coordinate or also a polygon. So the whole world is actually um, 
separate it or, or, or uh, split it into these uh, quarters. And depending on, on the, the resolution, they're smaller or larger. So if you want to have a geo hash with length one, you get very large uh, area. If it's of length three, it's already much smaller, 156 kilometers times 156 kilometers. And here, I'm just showing Berlin because we're here. Um, so Berlin in, 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 in four, length four uh, are these sizes and length three are these sizes. So if I would have a geofence around Berlin, that geofence would just be, if I'm using geo hash length three, uh, the whole polygon would be in one geo hash. And if I'm using larger resolution, length four, then maybe a geofence could be in four geo hashes. So the overlap. I'm also, that's not, there's no UDF or no function built in into KSQL, so I just built my uh, own uh, UDF for geo hashes as well. Again, using a Java library which actually does all the work, and I'm just calling the Java library. And by that, I have capabilities to, to, uh, to get the geo hash. So that's one thing I want to do with the length or resolution. And I can also uh, create a geo hash list for the covering bounding box around the geometry, around the polygon. So I have a polygon, I have a geo fence, and by that, I can just determine how many geo hashes do I need to actually cover the whole polygon. And here you can see how it's called uh, uh, as an example. <clears throat> and so this is now the, the one with the geo hash and the geometry. So with the polygon, I'm just getting back with length five, I'm getting back a list of geo hashes. And how do they help? They help, and that's why I showed the, group by, uh, the grouping before. They, show, they help in a similar way, but now instead of just providing one single group, I'm extending or I'm enriching both the stream as well as the, the, the geo fences, fences by the geo hash. In that case, in a point, it's always only one geo hash because there's one point and it's, it only belongs to one geo hash independent of uh, the resolution. And here I'm using length three. And of course, the length is basically uh, you have to tune it according to the size of your geofences. If you have very small geofences, you might want to go uh, larger. If you have larger uh, geofences, yeah, you, you just have basically have to tune it. So now what I'm doing is I'm extending it here. So what I get back is I get back uh, the geo hash for a certain uh, geofence. <clears throat> and then I'm doing again a group by. A group by the geo hash. So it's now no longer a group with only a group by with only one group. It's a group by with lots of groups, just as many polygons as you have and how separated they are all over the world. And depending also, of course, how, how uh, small your resolution is or how big your resolution is. And then again, I'm doing the join, but now the join on GeoHash and no longer group. And by that, I can now make sure that the solution gets is scalable because that's how the scalability works um, in Kafka. Because then at the end you have different partitions underneath in Kafka, and KSQL is is, is joining uh, on a partition level. And if you have multiple machines, uh, then multiple machines can actually do do the work. And if we check the code, um, the code works like that. Um, I have. I have my uh, geo hash with the geometry. I get a list of geo hashes back. So I have a lot of maybe one geo hash, but it could also be multiple depending on the resolution and the, the size of the polygon. And because KSQL has no explode functionality, and you can read more about here, um, you have to do it a bit in a pure in a poorly way. But you can do it. Um, it's a bit static. So what you have to do is you have to just do it for the first entry in the, in the array, and you get that geo hash and add it to the stream, and then you have to do it with an insert for the second one, an insert for the third one, and so on. 
So that is static at the moment. This is a bit the problem of, of, of the solution. Uh, so you have to know basically how many entries can you get back and tune it to that. But I hope this is only a, a matter of time until we get uh, explode functionality in KSQL. <clears throat> and then based on that, I can do again uh, the aggregation. And in a similar way as before, but now I have uh, the geohash uh, with the join later, uh, but the, 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 the idea is the same. I'm doing the geohash enrichment for the stream, similar to before, and of course the resolution has to be the same, otherwise we cannot join the stuff. And then here is the join with the geofence bulk, so I'm still having a list of, um, because I'm, I'm, I'm aggregating, so I still get a list uh, of polygons, and I join them uh, together, and now I get a similar result as before, but now the size, of course, is not always the same. The size really just depends on how many geofences you have in a per, per, per geohash. And of course, that's quite important in terms of how scalable your solution is. And that's why, if I go back, sorry, I always have that on the first slide. So that's why here the scalability of the solution is high. Um, latency is medium because we still have the bulk operation in it. And code smell is medium because uh, we have this kind of self-made explode functionality, which is not so nice because it brings in some static functionality inside it. So we have to extend it based on the, the, yeah, on the resolution. But it, it works and it's, 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 it's not too bad, I would say. <clears throat> and then we, ha we have some slight changes uh, we could do without code, only on the diagram. Instead of writing out or instead of returning the results from the UDF, I thought about it, but I, I immediately thought it's, it's very, it's very pure, poor from a code smell perspective. That's why it's very high. I could also send, publish my results directly to Kafka. So instead of the UDF returning the statuses, the UDF, it's just Java, the, the UDF could publish into a Kafka topic. And it works. I have the solution, I have it implemented, it works, but I'm not really happy with it. I think it's, it doesn't look right uh, to call Kafka from inside the UDF, but by that uh, you can avoid kind of the exploit or, or you do the explode inside your UDF. In the UDF you just uh, you have a loop anyway where you, uh, where you um, uh, calculate is the fence inside or outside and in that same loop I can basically just send a message for each status I'm having. And by that, and that's why we have just the UDF status here, the, the, the statement which calls the geofence bulk is still getting a, re a result back from the UDF, but it's no longer it's no longer the status anymore. It's just basically has it worked or not. That's why I'm just calling that UDF status. What you get back, and by that it's also kind of yeah asynchronous. You have one flow which does all the work, and then you you send it to another topic, and you cannot continue. You have to continue with that in a separate way. The other version, you can do the same explode as I've shown you before. Uh, you can do also on the result. So if I go back again, sorry, on that result, I also have multiple statuses. Using the same technique with the explode, I can bring it down to single rows. So I get one row or one, one message per status. And that's what I'm showing here. So that's the status list, the geometry, uh, the, the result list I got back. And I can just, uh, again, by doing a first and create stream as select and then an insert into that same stream as select, I'm just going through all the statuses, all the results, and providing them. But that's, again, of course, static. I have to have as many inserts as I have potential lengths of results, which is, at, at the end, how many polygons do I have per geohash? As so many inserts I would have to do. But then my result is clean. That's what I basically would, would like to get at the end of the geofencing. And that brings me, brings me to the second part. I will have it rather short because I only have five minutes left. But 
this is was my most uh, the most important part showing it how you can do it with ksql how to extend uh, ksql so do it in the kafka world itself um, and and also show you the power of of ksql with udfs so I, i'm i'm pretty happy with what i got but then i found a week ago uh, something else I don't really know by how. Uh, I think it was just an accident on Google uh, that I certainly found Tile 38. And Tile 38 is, is a database which allows you to do geospatial and geofencing. It's, it's, it's not absolutely new, uh, the product, so it exists for quite a while. Um, and it's implemented in, in Go. It's an open source uh, database. It's very similar to Redis. For those of you who know Redis, the way you work with Redis, you can also use any Redis client to work with it. And it supports actually not just geofencing, so the, the, the graphic I showed you before, the animated GIF as I've stolen from Tile38, tile they also have so-called roaming geofences. So two points which move and you want to know when two points are near together. Maybe it's an airplane, would not be good if they're too near. Maybe it's persons and you want to have a match, um, then it's good if they're near. And there, there are many more things you can do, especially also you have pluggable event notifications. So if something happens, or here, if it happens, then you can specify where do you want to send it to. And that's what you have, and especially you also have Kafka for it. And how does it work? You either have a channel, and you specify the channel uh, Berlin within an object. So this is the fence. So this way you define a fence. And you can see set chan. For those of you who have done work with uh, Redis, it's the same concept. You have a command, and then you have arguments uh, where, where you specify your command. And so this is the geofence, defining a geofence. And this is just the name of the, of the channel. And this is the key. Uh, yeah, which kind of groups uh, your, 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 your work. And then you can subscribe on Berlin, and then somebody else would do a set vehicle uh, at point, so this is the ID of the vehicle, at point, this point here, and this has to match vehicle is the key, I'm using the same key, so it's kind of the partitioning I'm doing, and if I'm setting that point, I will get back in the other statement, where uh, the other session, where I have done the subscribe, I will get back um, a, a message telling me that I'm outside of that polygon. You can do a similar uh, statement with set hook. Set hook is just adding. Uh, you don't you don't get it back on 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 the on the terminal or on the command line or on the tile 38 uh, standard API. Here with a set hook, you specify also the hook. In this case here, it's a Kafka hook. So I'm specifying the Kafka broker, the Kafka topic, and the rest is the same. And now if I'm doing a set vehicle, the same point, I'm getting back on Kafka, on that, on that topic, I'm getting back the same message. But now the message is in Kafka. So how can you integrate it with the rest of the world or the rest of the solution I've shown you so far? There are two ways I thought of, and I implemented them as well. Um, there is one, again, with UDFs. You just specify or implement your additional UDF, another UDF, which just communicates with Tile over the Redis uh, client API. You can just use the, the normal Java uh, uh, Redis or one of the Java APIs. I can't remember which one, and, or Java clients. And, 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 and then I just specify the set position uh, UDF. The, this set fence is actually not implemented. I've only done that because this is kind of done once. And then I just tested that it works. And this actually works. So I'm communicating now here with a service. That's why I called it a geofence service. So I'm no longer integrated into the flow. I'm interfacing with a service. And the service provides me the status. So it's also decoupled. And last but not least, a better solution, and I've implemented that halfway as well. I've implemented the set part. Here I'm still doing or, or working on it. Uh, as I mentioned, I just uh, uh, found Tile 38 a week ago. And this is using Kafka Connect. I just implemented my own Kafka connector. I just took the one from Redis. It's open source, so I could use quite a lot from the Redis connector. And I just changed what is necessary for Tile 38. And now it's properly 
in my way, uh, my point of view, properly integrated. So I have the position. I'm just using that Kafka Connect. It integrates with uh, Tile 38, and the hook is sent. The hook is doing the, the send to, to Kafka. And what would be nice, and you see that in the Outlook, is the way back. This is a sync connector, and I would like to implement that connector also as a source, so I can pick up the message I'm getting from Tile 38. I, I might want to change it to, to my own format. And then I have both ways. I can integrate Tile 38 as sync if I send it, and I will get all the results back as, as a source. So that's ongoing work, and this is how you call the connector. And with all of that, uh, you can then also visualize it. I'll skip that just to give you an impression. Arcadia data, I'm not selling Arcadia data. I have no connections to Arcadia data. But what I like, it's a, it's a standard BI tool, or it, it, it's, a, it's around for a long time. But what I've done, they added the capability also integrate KSQL. Because it's a standard tool, BI tool, from the old days of relational databases where you do SQL, and they just implemented the same concept. Instead of doing SQL, you do KSQL. And what you have, I'm not a JavaScript programmer, and I've first tried to implement my own dashboard, but I failed, and I was not really uh, wanted, wanted to, 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 um, to work on it um, more. And what you have here is just a map, and this map is, is, is kind of... Uh, showing the points, and the points are in real time. So the changes, you can add your fences, and the idea is that on the right, you have the, the status of the fences, so you, you can check it. That's all I have. Uh, if you have questions, I'm around. Uh, it's, it's lunchtime anyway now. So summary, I've mentioned most of it. Um, and the outlook, some performance tests are needed as well, some cleanup, everything is on my GitHub if you're interested. I've done that for a customer, it's a POC for a customer. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's ongoing work, uh, I'm not as far as I wanted to be, uh, but that's normal project life. But what I've presented uh, today or what I have on my GitHub, I'm quite happy with it. Thanks a lot, and uh, if you have questions, yeah, just come to the podium. Right, let's take the questions offline during our lunch break. I'm sure Guido will be around. <laughs>